Amen. All right. This talk is entitled Faith is spelled R I S K, which is risk. Huh? Is that right? All right. Now, I have 50 rand to give to somebody if you want it. You gotta come and get it if you want it. It's a, it's a businessman, but you know, he likes money, this guy. Wait, what, one, one sec, one sec, one sec. One. I'm gonna give you this, it's yours. Yeah. Did you have to work for this? No. You just, you just put your hand up because, I mean, it's like saying I have a desire. And um, yeah. Thank you. Next week we're not having fifty rand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why did you get up and come? Because you thought, well, I must be bluffing. It's going to make me sing a song. But it's a very simple, simple thing. I'm trying to illustrate here this morning that God has given to you something and you didn't have to work for it. That's a sermon on its own. You didn't have to work for it. You got it and it's free. It's only, only a requirement, only prerequisite is that you have a desire. You put your hand up and you come running for it. <laughs> I saw that hand, the baby wants 50 bucks. So, and that's what I want to share with you today about taking the risk because God has already given to you some, um, he has given to you authority because you have a relationship with the Lord and you have power because of the spirit living in you. And those things you don't have to work for. Hmm? And that all that the all that the Lord has done in that in he's healed you and he's paid, he's paid for it. It's, it's there. And for now that you've got all of this happening for you, who's that for? It's for somebody else, isn't it? God has called you and has given you some things. Firstly, you receive it, but then you want to give it away. And this morning we want to give it away. So we're going to pray for people. And, and we want to be careful as we do that. So we pray, maybe standing a little bit away from people. But at the same time, I believe that your prayers are effective. You might say, I don't have it. No, you do have it. This illustrated it to you. You have it. And all you need to do now is give it away. And it's got nothing to do with how good you are, by the way. Because that guy, he put his hand up. And, and he got the 50 bucks. It's not, it was not dependent about how good he was. All it required was his, his, his desire. That's all it was. I want this. And obviously when you come to the Lord, uh, you're walking with the Lord. The Lord has a way of dealing with each one of us. You know, he has a way of dealing with us. That's, that's another story. But the fact is, as his children, and I was born in, in my household, and they gave me their name, which is very, very big. It doesn't have a lot of money attached to the name, but, but uh, I do. But in our case, we have the Lord, right? And we have his name, and he's called us, and he says, go in my name and do these things. And the only thing I see in the text, only thing I see, people that are, have, have, are doing these things are simple people that have like passions. They got issues just like all of us. But what I do see are people who want to take the risk. 
take the risk. In other words, you have it. Now do you want to step out and do it? If I said, okay, we're going to pray for somebody, you'll say, well, it's not, I'm not good. I just illustrated that it doesn't matter how good or bad you are. What is important is, has you, have you got it? Yes, you do have it because he gave it to you. You still have the 50 bucks. Yeah, he's got it. Nobody's going to take it away from him today. He's going to walk out with it and he's going to eat it. He's going to enjoy it, whatever it is, right? Don't forget to pay your tithe. At this. <laughs> now, back, back, in, back, in, back in 73, back in 73, I, I gave a heart to the Lord. Uh, it's a long time ago. And, um, and for the, f I mean, I began almost immediately talking to people about the Lord because, because such was the, the desire and passion in my life. I felt like the Lord had uh, dealt with me and his, uh, whatever he was doing with me, I wanted to help do, some, do to somebody else. So it was a really powerful time. For the first nine years, so from 73 to 82, God was busy doing some very serious things in my life. Now, um, in 1980, that's seven years after I became a Christian, I started this church. And we started back in a, um, a house in Silver Glen. I think Karen was here today. I saw her. There she is. And she was little. And we'd all lived together in the one house upstairs. And underneath, we had the church in this garage. And it grew very, very rapidly um, from almost uh, us and a few people to about close on to 70 people within a few months. And then we moved to Red Row. We were there. And God grew us even more. And then we moved a few years later to uh, Twin City. We were there in Twin City number two. And we grew again in leaps and bounds. And we added staff and all kinds of things happened. Wonderful, powerful things. And just before we went to Twin City, I think it was just before that, I started to pray with some people very seriously in the, in the house we had rented uh, from the city in 5 or 7. And every Sunday afternoon, we would pray with people from 4 o'clock, talk, pray. And uh, we saw some very, very powerful things happen then. Uh, people that were being healed and freed and set free in many, many wonderful ways. And then we moved to Twin City. We continued that every Sunday night again, four o'clock. Just gather people like this and we'll pray with people. And I, and I you know, what, what I have seen over the years is that if you do not take the risk and pray, sometimes we, we think, well, it's not going to happen. Well, it won't happen if you don't take the risk. If somebody says they're sick, and then you think, well, okay, wonderful, we'll, we'll pray with you and pray for you. But I think it's important for us to take the risk, because the Lord could be speaking to you. Sometimes he doesn't speak to you. In those days when I was praying for those people in the rented house, I had no idea what I was doing, actually, just go there. And initially, I was wanting to just talk to the home group leaders, gather them together and, you know, help them with, uh, with some of the studies and so on. But the Lord, after a few weeks of that, he said to me, put away your notes, put away all of that. And I want you to find somebody that you can pray for in front of these people. Uh, I said, oh, okay. And by that time, I was praying with people, mainly at home, with people that, that saw us and we prayed with them. And again, God was really touching and doing things. And so during that time, uh, the next week, I found somebody and we prayed. The Spirit of the Lord came, healed that lady, freed her, and the Lord said, do it again. And I brought, I called the guys together again next weekend, uh, Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock. We had our service Sunday morning, but we brought them all together again, 4 o'clock in that small house. Um, and then and God touched that woman again, uh, that lady. And then the Lord said, do it again. The third time, about 40 people gathered, and over a dozen of them stood up for prayer. They felt like they needed prayer. And I didn't talk. Really. There was no preaching, no singing, no worship, no nothing. 
I'll just gather them. I'll go into my office. I use part of the house as my office and so on. And, and I'll say to the Lord, I don't know what you want to do here, but I'm here. Like you here. You don't, you don't have it. You, you, you don't, it's got nothing to do with actually how much you prayed or any of that stuff. Though all of that is part of our lives and ought to be part of our lives. But you don't get into a, into a frenzy whipping up this thing to get people well. No, all it would take is faith that is spelt R-I-S-K. That's it. You take the risk. And whether the person gets healed or not is not your problem. Your, your responsibility, my responsibility is to do the praying. And so God began to touch and bleed, heal people in a very, very powerful ways. And, and, and I've, I've been thinking about that now, even in, uh, in this COVID time, you know, we've been as a church, always been involved in laying hands on the people and praying with them and so on. And I think we need to, uh, at least in a very cautious way, go back to our culture of being a people of the spirit, people who will take the risk hmm? and go and pray. So when I became a vineyard pastor, uh, so in 1980, we started this, in 82, uh, before all of this uh, story that I told you, in 82, I became a vineyard pastor a long time ago. In fact, we were probably the first ones in the country outside of the USA. Um, and, and then I began to grow in leaps and bounds because this whole movement had one focus, and that is to allow the Holy Spirit space and room to do whatever he wanted. Up until that point, nine years of my life, I enjoyed whatever I enjoyed, talking to people, all of that. But from that point on, from 82 on, Something happened. And that's what I was talking about just now. The spirit of the Lord uh, helping me, leading me, helping me to take, make the risks, take the risks, and, and touch people's lives. And so uh, I, believe, I believe our walk with the Lord is a walk in his power. It's a walk in his power. And it's got nothing to do with you again, because... You have received the power. You didn't get it. You didn't earn it, in other words. Not because of your all goodness or anything you've done. Because I tell you, we're not all good. We're not perfect people, right? Hello? You and I have received something. And, but the walk that you have is a walk in power. Being led by the Spirit, you know, led, the word is about leadership, isn't it? So being led by the Spirit means that you give the Spirit leadership in your life. What is he saying? And so it means that we will have to get to a place where we try to listen and we want to listen to the Lord. We watch sin in our lives. We, we sort out things, other things in our lives. That's a, our private walk with the Lord. But all of that got nothing to do with what God does. What I found out from the text is that the main ingredient is this thing of taking a risk. So, but let's look at one or two stories and we'll talk quickly and then I'll pray. Is that all right? So let's look at it. In Matthew 14, we read about Peter and Jesus had gone, uh, had been on the mountain praying and he sent his disciples away. And, and the verse 25 says, and during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, the disciples on the lake, they were in a boat walking and he went to them fourth watch is uh, um, is three o'clock in the morning six o'clock in the afternoon is first nine o'clock twelve o'clock third watch fourth watch three o'clock in the morning so the lord was walking on the lake walking on the lake going to the disciples when the disciples saw him walking on the lake they were terrified it's a ghost they said and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. And then Peter pipes up and he says, 
Lord, if it's you, and he didn't know it was the Lord. And sometimes when you hear the Lord and when you see the Lord in a certain way, he's coming to you in a new way, like this morning when we start praying with people and people online, we're going to get them to pray with themselves or whoever it is near them. Hey, you, you know, you, you, you want to ask, is this the Lord? You ask him, is this the Lord? And most often he would say, yes, it's me. And so if it's you, Lord, I don't know it is you, but tell me to come to you on the water. And so, and so the Lord said, one word, come. It's always there for you. And it's got nothing to do with, hey, Peter, are you in a good state? Have you sorted your relationship out with me? Have you sorted your relationship ship out with somebody else? Are you okay? No, they, all of that shall be done, right? Let's assume that it's all in a, in a good state. You're walking with the Lord, but, but ministry in the spirit, like my life, the first nine years, I lived a real wonderful, powerful life, but at the same time, I was not taking the risks I thought I needed to take. So after I became a vineyard pastor, something happened. Oof, I got catapulted, not by anybody, but by the spirit of the Lord who now began to take leadership in my life. And I'm trying to raise up an army of you who would do this, not just here, but everywhere. And that doesn't mean now you must get a tent and go and preach now. Just, just be normal people who would, wherever you are at work, somebody says they're not well, then you say, okay, can I pray for you? We've seen people touch people's lives. The other day on, 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 on my Zoom call, we had prayed for this one lady um, who, whose friend, uh, cousin or nephew or niece or something was really sick, was bedridden and um, in Johannesburg. And so um, we have some people around the country meeting on Wednesday just to pray, just to talk. Um, so she told us a story about how God healed that child and how she started to walk and all that after we had prayed with her. It's wonderful things that can happen when people are praying with you, praying for you. You know, that's one of the things we must do. First thing, seek the Lord. Come. Where is Jesus calling Peter to? I'm walking on the water. Come. How many of you would want to take the risk like that? You're on the, on the Durban Harbor. Hmm? Think of it. Sometimes we read this book, we think, ah, that, huh? but this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you'll find out if you have a Christianity of some kind. You just talk or you're, you know, God's power is at work in your life. This is where the rubber meets the road. So you're going to have to step out. And so you're in the Durban Harbor, you're in a boat, somebody's walking on the, on the ocean, and you have the audacity to ask, you know, to raise your hand, I want the 50 bucks. And you have the audacity to say, I want to, I want to if it's you, you say it's you. It's, it's Jesus telling me, it's me, don't be afraid. And he says, okay, wow, if it's you. Let me, call me. Let me come to you on the water. I want to walk on the water too. Do you, do you have that, like that desire, you know, for, for spiritual things? That's what I'm talking about. You put your hand up. I want that. I want, I want that. And so you go for it. And that's what God wants, is to desire with all your heart the things of the spirit. Hmm? And something's going to happen. Your life will be very different. Now, the whole bunch of guys on the boat right? They didn't, you can't say they're not saved. They are. They're not like devils. They are God's people on the boat, right? But one guy walked on the water. I'm trying to labor that so that you understand that you can choose to stay where you are in the condition that you are and walk whatever, you're going to go to heaven for sure. But I tell you, God is calling you to a whole different kind of life. 
in the spirit where you'd want to take the risk. And maybe if you would look bad, and this thing about, about ministry, it's like you would look bad sometimes when things don't work like you want it to work. But that doesn't matter. It's got nothing to do with you. It's what God is doing and what's happening in the world. And so Peter got out, down out of the boat and walked on the water and came toward Jesus. As long as you're doing something like that, coming toward the Lord. And then the scripture says that then when he saw the wind, yes, Jesus is walking on the, he's walking on the water. And then when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, why did you doubt? And again, you know, you have this, and I've had that in my life. I think, wow, wonderful things happen. And then suddenly the enemy comes, bang. And many times I've, I've, I've led conferences where they're both here and abroad. Man, sometimes the attack happens before, sometimes during, sometimes after. And especially after, when everything is like wonderful things of, you know, God's, it's like you're, you're in heaven already. And then suddenly the enemy comes with this thing. But, but that's part of the deal, see? So when, but the Lord's always near. He says, why did you doubt? You know, things, things will work out. Why did you doubt? Don't doubt. But the Lord's there. He picks you up, pulls you back. And, because, and you know, both of them walked. Jesus didn't carry the, Peter to the boat. Both of them walked back to the boat. And so when he got back to the boat, they climbed into the boat. The wind died down. And those, the, those who were in the boat worshipped him. They saw. It's not like they were not, not Christian. <laughs> they were Christian. Uh, truly, you are the son of God. I, I, think, I think you have people that will stay in a boat and you could live that there all your life and worship the Lord. Or you can have some fun. If you start now, you know how they talk about savings. You start saving early. In time, it started to build. He said, well, it's too late for me to say, no, you save any time. You can save when you're 90 years old. You can start saving, right? Hmm. So it's never too late to begin ministry in the spirit. Never too late. You say, well, I don't, I don't have it. Yeah, well, you do have it. That man, he still got that 50 bucks. He never spent it yet. But he can't spend it. That's his money. You and I have something from the Lord. He said, well, I'm not right. Who told you that? Well, why don't you come right? Eh? What are you waiting for? Why did you get right? You want to stay like that in that state? Mm. No. Okay, let me tell you one more story and then we'll pray. Elisha, look at this one. And I don't think I have all, but let me, let's look at it. 2 Kings 2, verse number 8. And Elisha, remember he wanted the double portion from the Lord. He put his hand up. Um, can I ask you something? Yes. I want to give you, I want double portion of your spirit. Really? Double portion. Yes, double portion. While it's a hard thing you've asked, but you know, you will get it if you see me go. If you, if you see me go, I'll give it to you. God's going to give it to you. And so he suddenly saw chariots of fire and, and uh, horse, horses and so on coming from heaven and Elijah being caught up. And as Elijah was taken up, his cloak, his coat fell down. And it was the same coat that Elijah used earlier to, to open the, the river, the Jordan. He goes there and slaps the thing with, the, with his coat and the water parts and they walk across so now the coat falls down, he goes away, and now the big question is, do I have it? This is like Jesus. He's gone up to be with the Lord, sit at the right hand side of the Father. He sends the spirit, the mantle, the coat falls on us. The thing is, we have it because he gave it to us. Now the question is, are we going to take the risk? Okay, we pick up the story. So now Elijah, now Elijah took his mantle, rode it up, 
and struck the water and he divided. This was the first time that Elijah with a J and it was divided and that. And, that, and so the, the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask, what may, what may I do for you before I'm taken from you? He says, let, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And so he said, hey, you've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me, when I am taken from you, it shall be so. But if not, it shall not be so. I think you're reading NIV. Let's go there then. So, and as they were walking along and talking, suddenly a chariot of, and, and of fire and the horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah, this is like Jesus, the type, taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. And Elijah saw, saw this, my father, my father, chariots of horse and horsemen of Israel. And Elijah saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and that fell upon him and he tore it in two. And he, then Elijah, when he picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back, he went back and he figured out whether this thing is going to work. And then he goes back and stood on the bank of the Jordan he took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and he struck the water with it. And he says, where now is the Lord God of Elijah? He asked, and when he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left and he crossed over. And the company of the prophets from Jericho who were watching said, the spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and they bowed to the ground. Now, again, look, this is what I'm saying. If you have it, and you do have it, if you are his, then you can pray. You don't need to call me or anybody. Really, you don't. And what you do, you lay your hands on yourself and you say, in the name of Jesus, it's just like take the mantle and you strike the water. It should part. And on the word of the Lord, when the Lord said that where, where you, uh, when you lay hands upon the sick, they shall recover. Then you do that. You can lay hands upon you or somebody else and they shall recover. The, the Lord said, you take the risk of praying. And uh, it's got nothing to do with how good the prayer is or bad, but it's a matter of you being obedient. Hello? I hope I'm getting that across to you. So when did this guy receive the double portion? When he took the mantle, no, he still didn't get it. When he took the mantle, he wanted to go and see if this is going to work. He says, no way is the God of Elijah, and he stuck it. Again, taking the risk. The people that were watching him in the gallery, those prophets, they would have said, uh, yeah, well, nothing happened, look at him. But still, you take the risk. But what did happen is the water parted. And they immediately said, wow, that seemed like the spirit that was on Elijah is on now this other guy. And so authority comes from our relationship. If you have a relationship, you have authority. You go in his name. Power comes from the spirit that God has given you. It's no good praying in the boat. Hello? It's no good praying in the boat. Peter walked on the water whilst the other disciples only worshiped the Lord. Now you can stay and worship the Lord. That's fine, but you and I need to step out to do some stuff if you want to see it. Now, you can worship the Lord and think that's cool, but you remember, you're still in the boat. Hmm. Therefore, some people, this worshiping the Lord is a, is a, is a risk. Eh? I remember the first time when we started to pray and worship the Lord. Because in the church those days, if nobody would raise their hands, in fact, if it went here somewhere, People raise their hands and stay there or maybe like that. Attempt to do that. Talking about the 80s. Go very, very seldom they go beyond their head. But to have two hands, eyes closed, or sometimes go on your knees, which we began to like get involved and worship the Lord. It was a big risk. Wonderful. Now that you got that going in your life, you really connected with the Lord. Wonderful. How about... Adding to that, a step out of the boat. 
I don't know what it is that God's calling you to, but definitely, he's definitely calling his church to step out and to do things in these days. See, Peter, he didn't wait for perfect conditions. Um, the winds and the waves were rough. He didn't wait for it. He, all he said was, Lord, if that's you, bid me come. And sometimes, you know, when we are preoccupied with being guided by God instead of doing what he already authorized us to do, you know, we're waiting for God. God, you asked, you asked God, he, he, you asked him for a double portion or you said, uh, Lord, if it's you, come, bid me come to you in the water. Lord, this, that, the other. You keep asking, but you don't ever step out. You don't attempt to make the move, then you're still in the boat. Still in the boat. Hmm. I believe maybe you should ask the Lord, what are you expecting me to do? Jesus never gave anybody else any cue there. Only one guy piped up and put his hand up, eh? and he said, uh, that's you, fixed up. That's why Peter became a pillar in the church. And the Lord hired him for that because he is the kind of guy who's going to take the risk. Hmm. Take the risk. If it's you. So Peter walked towards Jesus and any kind of receiving from the Lord must take us toward him, toward the Lord. And so Peter didn't walk so much on the water as he did on the word of the Lord. So uh, that's what we're called to, to walk in the word of the Lord. There are new battles, yes, in all our new, in our dealings with the Lord. He will deal with sin. I know God has always been like that with me. He, I can't get away with anything. There's no, no such thing. If, you, if I leave anything in my life, then I can bet the spirit of the Lord who leads us every day, he's going to point his finger. Ah, ah, he's very good at that. And he doesn't just point his finger at words, and, and, but he'll, he'll talk about your thoughts, you talk about your attitude, you talk about what you said or did in this situation or that situation. He doesn't leave us. So I am not dealing with that because I know God's good at that. But inside you, when you start stepping out, when you do step out, Peter had some doubts. He stepped out, he's walking on the water, but then he realized, what am I doing? I'm you're not supposed to ask anybody. And in those days, when I was listening to people like John Wimber and others that were really walking in the Lord, in real power, um, and they told me stories. Well, I'd hear the stories too. And they would have doubt. They didn't know what, what, what God was saying or not, or not saying. This, they just felt they would go based on the hunch. It's a hunch. And, and so today, as we were to pray for people, you would have like a thought. Hmm? Just a thought. Or maybe in your house, you had a thought. I talked about that a little bit last week. I'm trying to wrap up last week's. You have a thought. That woman thought to herself, if I can touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I'll be made with her. I believe that's the spirit of the Lord. He'd give you thoughts like that. How about you make a phone call? How about you write that note? How about you, you know, whatever it is God's saying. And so you, you step out based on that. You step out based on that. That is what God's calling you to. And when you do, some real powerful things can happen. But doubt comes, must come. God will deal with that. He's, he's always nearby to, to pick you up. We must grow from, from self-doubt to confidence. Yeah. Sometimes it's the other way around. It seems that when sometimes when God wants to use us or we experience some power in our lives, other things creep in. We go from confidence to self-doubt, from strength to weakness, from giftedness to think, well, hey, am I, I, who am I, man? You know, I think that, you know, I'm not supposed to do this. Self-doubt. We all have that. But I'm saying to you today, God is able. <clears throat> not talking. We're going to pray. Is that all right? I love it. I don't care whether you like it or not. We're going to pray.
uh, you can sit, but if you want to stand with me, I'd like you to stand and then you can sit down if you need to. We've got some time. It's only 10 o'clock or 10 past 10 or something like that. We'll shoot for whatever time. I just want to spend this, some time in the presence of the Lord. Is that all right? I don't care if it's not all right with you, but it's all right with me. Byron, would you want to come play, play with us? Play something. I don't want a big noise just to uh, minister to the Lord very quietly. So turn all the equipment down if you're going to do it. Come. You probably noticed in the vineyard, we don't hype up anything. Like during this time, the hallows of your glory to God and get into the surah of all of this thing. And then when you all psyched up, yes, the Lord is here. Would you want to? No, we're not there. The reason we do, we do that deliberately. We do that deliberately because it's not about us. It's not about how we, uh, you know, get our, our notes right in our voice and change our tone and, and get into the mood. No, either God is going to do this or not. Hmm? You know, Marcus didn't have to do anything. All he had was put his hand up. If somebody else put their hand up the side, but they did not leave the room. Uh, one guy ran out. He says, oh, okay, if you want it, there it is. He got it. This is, so it's simple, very, very simple, right? So don't get into a sur, but at the same time, let's just focus on the spirit of the Lord. One can even pray in the spirit quietly under the breath. And um, you can pray, or you can close your eyes, you can keep your eyes open. You know, I want us to be a normal simple church 